Hey, Crime Salad listeners, welcome back to another episode of Crime Salad, where we talk true crime. My name is Ashley. And I'm Ricky. And if you haven't already, subscribe wherever you're listening, please. We would greatly appreciate it. Also, thank you to those of you who snatched up some of our new merch. I am so excited about it. Check it out if you haven't already. That's crimesaladpod.com. I seriously spent like $100 on our own merch. Is that weird or normal? I don't know. But whatever, it makes me feel good. Also, thanks to our patrons this week, we have Leanne, Barbara, Karami, Sparky. Thank you guys so much. It's seriously so helpful. Enjoy ad-free listening and bonus episodes in a couple weeks. It's soon. It's finally happening. Yes, thank you so much for your support. We really, really appreciate it. Now, before we jump in, we would like to give you a content warning because some of the details in this episode may be disturbing to listeners. Listener discretion advised. So most likely, you remember this case that we're about to cover today because it was plastered all over social media and the news as police were on a 43-day manhunt for a woman by the name of Caitlin Armstrong, a cyclist who fled to Costa Rica after being a main suspect in the murder of a 25-year-old professional cyclist named Anna Mariah Wilson. Some say it was a love triangle that turned deadly. Now, Caitlin Armstrong planned to be completely off the grid. She went to the extremes by changing her hair color, going by a different name, and even had plastic surgery done. It was in Austin, Texas on May 11, 2022, where Anna Mariah Wilson was found dead. In this story, we will be referring to Anna Mariah Wilson as Mariah. A lot of people knew her as Mariah Wilson, the professional cyclist, or Mo. In Austin, Texas, Mariah was staying with her friend, Caitlin Cash, and we will be referring to her as Cash. Mariah was in town for a big 157-mile gravel cycling race where she was expected to be the winner. On that Wednesday, Cash arrived home to find the stairs to her apartment were blocked with a large travel bag for a mountain bike, which belonged to her friend Mariah. This confused her because earlier in the evening, before she left to have dinner with her friends, that same travel bag was located on her front porch. And Cash told Mariah she should place the bag inside the apartment so it wouldn't be stolen. As she carried the bag upstairs, she noticed that her apartment door was unlocked, which was even more strange. And also, it was upsetting at the time because Cash had a code entry lock on her entry door and had given Mariah the code for her to use over the next few days. As soon as she entered the apartment, she noticed that Mariah's expensive racing bike was missing and the apartment was a total mess. Despite her uneasy feeling about all of these things happening, she continued into the apartment shouting Mariah's name, but Mariah didn't answer. And then once she arrived at her bathroom, she found her friend covered in blood and immediately called 911 and began performing CPR. At 9.56 p.m., Officer Martin Salinas arrived at the scene and took over performing CPR. However, he noticed her severe wounds and spent 9mm bullet cartridges all around her body. The gun wasn't present at the scene, and with the types of injuries she suffered, suicide was not the answer. Once emergency medical personnel arrived, they transported her to the hospital where she was officially pronounced dead at 10.10pm by Dr. Escott. Mariah had been shot twice in the face and head and once in the chest. The shot to her chest occurred while she was already down on the ground. That bullet went through Mariah's body and chipped the tile flooring beneath her. At first glance, her death looked like an execution. Cash told Officer Salinas that her friend was a professional cyclist, and she picked her up from the airport on May 10th for a race she had that coming weekend in Heiko, Texas. Cash told officers that she had received text messages from Mariah telling her that she was going to meet up with a friend named Colin to go swimming. 
Cash left at 5.30 p.m. to have dinner with her friends. And according to the app on her phone, which tells her when the front door code is used to lock or unlock her door, it appeared that Mariah left the apartment at 5.55 p.m. and arrived back at 8.36 p.m. Cash told police that Colin Strickland was the full name of Mariah's date, and he was a professional cyclist who was sponsored by Red Bull. Police immediately canvassed the area and found Mariah's stolen, specialized S-Works brand bicycle 100 feet down the street hidden in some thick foliage. Since Colin was the last known person to be with Mariah that night, police wanted to talk with him immediately. And police were able to locate Colin through social media, and when they pulled his driver's license, he had a local address in Austin. But before police could locate and talk to Colin, they needed to get to know their victim. They learned that Mariah was a 25-year-old elite athlete who excelled in her field of cycling and gravel racing. Before she entered the racing field of elite cycling, she was also a star alpine skier. In her 10-year career as an alpine skier, she was nationally ranked and racked up numerous award titles. Mariah grew up in the town of Kirby, Vermont, where she attended and graduated from the Burke Mountain Academy. Burke is a college preparatory school located in East Burke, Vermont. It educates and trains alpine ski racing athletes on the slopes of the adjacent Burke Mountain Ski Resort. It started in 1970 and was the first ski academy in North America at the time. It had a long 50-year history of training alpine and Nordic skiers, producing many Olympians. So it was here that Mariah first learned the kind of discipline needed to compete at a top-tier level. Following her graduation from Burke, she attended Dartmouth College, where she continued her alpine ski career and graduated in 2019 with a bachelor's degree in engineering. She also came from a family of competitive athletes. Her father, Eric Wilson, skied for the U.S. national team, and her aunt Laura was a Nordic skier who competed at the Olympics. So she comes from a very athletic family. Growing up in Vermont, she spent the winter skiing and the summers training and staying in competitive condition on a mountain bike. After graduation, she took a job with Specialized Bicycle Components, which is a billion-dollar company that designs, manufactures, and markets bicycle components and related products under a brand known globally as Specialized. It was while working at Specialized when she fell in love with the sport of gravel racing. Gravel racing has recently exploded in popularity and is a relatively new racing category that involves cycling that primarily takes riders on a gravel road with limited pavement, if any. There are now gravel races across the entire globe that span from single-day events to multi-day epic races. Gravel racing is best described as a cross between regular bicycle cross racing and mountain bike racing. The prize amounts for these types of professional level events can range from thousands of dollars all the way up to $250,000. I might have to start looking into this. They can also come with pretty nice corporate sponsorships. In a gravel race, the surfaces are constantly changing. It can quickly transition from pavement to loose dirt to chunky gravel. And it's more challenging than traditional cycling races. Another one of these elite racers was 35-year-old Colin Strickland, and he had caught Mariah's eye. Now, there are different versions of how they met and whether or not they dated for more than a few weeks. What is clear is that Mariah didn't realize that Colin was in an exclusive relationship with his live-in girlfriend, 34-year-old Caitlin Armstrong. However, there is ample evidence that all three of them knew of each other's existence. It's also unclear whether Colin was completely honest with either of them. So when police arrived at Colin's doorstep the next day, they were surprised to hear him deny and then minimize his relationship or interest in Mariah Wilson. And while Colin was initially cooperative, it appears he wasn't completely truthful. Immediately following Mariah's murder, Detective Ramirez observed a surveillance camera mounted on the exterior of a residence across from the house next door. 
and that camera caught a portion of Cash's apartment and carport. As we know from Mariah's friend, she received a notification on her phone app that indicated her front door was unlocked at 8.36 p.m. The surveillance camera showed a black Jeep Cherokee drive past Cash's house and then stop at 8.37 p.m. at the house just out of view. The Jeep Cherokee was distinctive because it had a large bicycle rack mounted on the tow hitch of the vehicle and a luggage rack mounted on the roof. In the video, you can see the vehicle slow down and appear to come to a complete stop next door. That's exactly one minute after Mariah arrived back at Cash's apartment. So police were surprised when they arrived at Strickland's residence and noticed three vehicles in the driveway. There was a 2002 BMW motorcycle, a 1998 Mercedes, and a 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee with the exact same tow hitch mounted bike rack and roof rack. Colin told officers that he lived there with his girlfriend, Caitlin Armstrong, and they had been dating for three years. Colin agreed to drive down to the Austin Police Department for a formal interview, and during that interview, Colin admitted to briefly dating Mariah during the two-week period when he and Caitlin were broken up. However, he and Caitlin immediately got back together, and Colin allegedly ended his romantic relationship with Mariah Wilson. Caitlin became aware of the relationship and immediately called Mariah to tell her that she and Colin were never broken up and she was being used and lied to. She demanded that Mariah immediately end her relationship with Colin and even took steps to ensure the two couldn't contact each other again. Caitlin went into Colin's phone and blocked Mariah in his contacts app and on social media. However, Colin still wanted to remain friends with Mariah, and as a result, he took extra precautions to keep that communication secret from Caitlin. The first thing he did was change Caitlin's name in his phone to a guy's name. Then he would immediately delete all of their text messages so that Caitlin wouldn't find them on his phone. He had to take this extra precaution because Caitlin no longer trusted Colin and regularly checked his phone for signs of infidelity. What's interesting is Colin also admitted to seeing Mariah on the night of her murder. He admitted to picking her up at 5.45 p.m. from Cash's residence on his motorcycle. They went to the city of Austin Deep Eddy Pool and swam together for an hour. After they were done swimming, he and Mariah walked over to the Pool Burger restaurant on Lake Austin Boulevard where they ate dinner together. They made plans to see each other again before the big race and then he drove Mariah back to Cash's residence. According to the timeline, they quickly said goodbye. At almost the exact moment that Mariah was unlocking Cash's door, Colin was sitting on his motorcycle and sending a text message to Caitlin that said, Hey, are you out? I went to drop off some flowers for Allison at her son's house up north and my phone died. Heading home unless you have another food suggestion. Never mentioning that he was out with Mariah. And he took these steps to mislead Caitlin into believing he was doing something other than cheating on her. Then Colin rode his motorcycle back to his home and noticed that Caitlin was gone. That was at approximately 8.43 p.m. He sent Caitlin another text message telling her that he was home and was worried about her. But he failed to get an answer back to either text, which was unlike Caitlin. While he waited for her to come home, he went to his garage and began working on his bicycle being that they were in constant need of maintenance and repair for his own upcoming races. And then Caitlin arrived back home, and it was 9.21 p.m. And when she arrived home, she seemed normal and not upset, angry, or agitated. She greeted him like she normally would, and went inside as if it were just another night. While Colin was being interviewed by law enforcement, he spoke very highly of Mariah. He told investigators that the two were just friends, and he was assisting her in getting some new corporate sponsors. He said that she was the best female cyclist in the United States and possibly the world. He said he loved training with Mariah because she was on the same elite level and their rides were productive and worthy of his time. However, he did not like riding with his girlfriend, Caitlin. He told investigators that she was merely a participant in the activity of mountain biking while he was a professional racer. He disliked when she tried to ride with him because she didn't ride at his competitive level and held him back. 
He said that he would get grumpy when she insisted on riding with him because she was unable to keep up with his professional level. Colin also shared something alarming with the police. So in December of 2021, in January of 2022, he purchased two firearms. One was a Springfield Armory handgun for himself and Sig Sawyer 9mm handgun for Caitlin. He denied having anything to do with Mariah's murder and said that Caitlin couldn't have been involved either, although she had recently been practicing at a gun range with her sister. He told investigators that Caitlin couldn't have known the address of where Mariah was staying and she couldn't have tracked him on his phone because he had turned it off the entire time he was with Mariah. He also said that Caitlin didn't know anyone in the area where Mariah was staying and would have no reason to be in the area. After speaking to Colin, police became very interested in Caitlin. They discovered that she had an outstanding Class B warrant for a theft charge from a year earlier. During that incident, Caitlin went to a med spa to get Botox. When her credit card was declined for the $650 charge, she said that she had another card in her car and would be right back. However, she never came back and she left behind her maxed out MasterCard with her name on it. The spa pressed charges, which resulted in the unserved arrest warrant. Once Caitlin was arrested and placed into an interrogation room, they discovered that the warrant was no longer valid. There was a discrepancy on the birth date of the warrant, so police had to tell her that she was free to leave. Go figure. Before she was able to get up and leave, they asked her if she was aware of what transpired in the last 24 hours. She stated that Colin told her that one of the women he knew in the cycling community had passed away. With each comment made about the case, she remained still and oddly quiet. Law enforcement were becoming frustrated as they couldn't engage Caitlin in any dialogue. As a result, they began to challenge Caitlin, asking her if she knew her boyfriend was cheating on her and taking out another girl. She continued to remain still and stoic, not moving, not responding. She knew she was free to leave, but it seemed her curiosity kept her listening to what they had to say. Finally, they pulled out their best evidence and showed Caitlin the video surveillance of her driving past the apartment where Mariah was shot. They showed her the video of her parking at the adjacent property just one minute after Colin sent her the text where he lied about what he was doing and where he had been. They began to speculate that perhaps she had been tracking him through his phone or on a tracking device. They kept suggesting that perhaps she followed him, but continued to get no response. They wanted to know if Caitlin watched as Mariah got off the back of her boyfriend's motorcycle, leaned in and either kissed or hugged him goodbye. They surmised that watching Colin and Mariah either hug or kiss each other could have put her in a rage and caused her to snap. They told her that the evidence was now stacking up against her and it wasn't looking good for her. Finally, this caused her to nod her head up and down as if she were in agreement, but again, not verbally saying a word. But she also never denied her involvement or the fact that she was in front of the home where Mariah was staying within minutes of their arrival. Finally, Caitlin turned her head and rolled her eyes in an angry manner. Then she said, I'm not certain as to even what you mean or what he said because I didn't have any idea that he saw or even went out with this girl as of recently. Detective Connor suggested that maybe she didn't know anything and just happened to be in the area, and Caitlin once again began nodding and agreeing. After a long period of continued stillness and silence, the police ended the interview. But they did serve a search warrant on her home and seized all of her and Colin's guns. Preliminary forensics said there was a high likelihood that the shell casings found near Mariah's body came from Caitlin's gun, and soon the forensics lab would definitively prove that Caitlin's gun was the murder weapon. In the meantime, there was a lot of talk and gossip going around the cycling community, which caused Colin to lose his corporate sponsors. He released a statement on social media that appears on its face to be filled with half-truths based on the police reports. Here is Colin's carefully worded statement. I am reeling from grieving Mariah Wilson's death from the facts that have emerged during the investigation. I cannot begin to imagine the pain felt by Mo's family and her close friends. 
There is no way to adequately express the regret and torture I feel about my proximity to this horrible crime. I am sorry, and I simply cannot make sense of this tragedy. Although it will be a matter of small consolation to anyone else who cared for Mo, I want you to know that I have cooperated fully with investigators ever since I learned the terrible news, and I will continue to do so until some form of justice is served. As a point of clarification to facts previously reported, Mariah Wilson and I had a brief romantic relationship from late October to early November 2021 that spanned a week or so while Wilson was visiting Austin. At the time, she and I both recently ended relationships. She returned to her home in California, and about a month later, Caitlin Armstrong and I reconciled and resumed our relationship. Since then, I have often saw Mariah at cycling events, and always in public settings. We both competed in Bentonville, Arkansas, and in Stillwater and Monterey, California. We also met for a four-hour training ride in Santa Cruz after the Sea Otter Classic in Monterey. After our brief relationship in October of 2021, we were not in a romantic relationship, only a platonic and professional one. It was not my intention to pursue an auxiliary romantic relationship that would mislead anyone. Mariah and I were both leaders in this lonely niche sport of cycling, and I admired her greatly and considered her a close friend. I am deeply grieving her loss. Now, portions of that statement appear to be false. In fact, in January of 2022, Mariah herself seemed confused about the status of her relationship with Colin. She sent him a text five months before her murder, which stated, Hey, so I would like to talk to you at some point. I had originally texted you on Friday, but it appears that my texts aren't going through again. This weekend was strange for me, and I just want to know what's going on. If you want to be friends, seems to be the case, then that's cool. But I like to talk about it because honestly, my mind has been going in circles and I don't know what to think. From her text message, she was referring to seeing Caitlin and Colin together at a bike race. According to anonymous sources, which seemed credible enough to make it into an arrest affidavit, Colin was seeing both women at the same time. And according to this source, he was allegedly telling Caitlin that Mariah was pursuing him, but racing is a small world and he wanted to keep things professional and friendly. He convinced Caitlin that he was only helping her out to get some corporate sponsors. And it appears that neither woman fully believed him. The next day, Colin responded to Mariah's text by telling her, Hey Mo, I feel very shitty for putting you in a position where you don't feel comfortable. Caitlin came along to go to a meeting about the Sprinter Spartan Hotel project. In hindsight, this was not a good idea. Based on Colin's response, it's easy to infer that he was leading Mariah to believe he wasn't romantically involved with Caitlin any longer and only maintained a professional business relationship with her. Colin and Caitlin had a business together, customizing and reselling travel trailers. Caitlin also worked as a yoga instructor and a real estate agent. In fact, she and Colin owned the home where they resided together, and she owned at least two other rental properties. One of Mariah's friends called the police department requesting to remain anonymous. In the arrest affidavit, she is only referred to by the pseudonym Jane. Jane willingly provided information on the condition she wouldn't be publicly named as she feared retribution by Caitlin. Jane told investigators that Mariah and Colin had an on and off again long distance relationship since fall of 2021, which was about eight months in total at the time of her murder. She told investigators that Caitlin had discovered the relationship and called Mariah several times, threatening her and telling her to stay away from Colin. She also said that within the last two months, Caitlin had begun following Mariah on social media and on her Strava app. Strava is an app where you can post your run, ride, or hike, and others can follow you, leave comments, cheer you on, and even find a new route. It also tracks your stats. 
Mariah had posted her route earlier that day, so it's likely that's where Caitlin discovered where she was staying and either staked it out, waiting to see if Colin or Mariah were together or had been tracking him another way. Another anonymous caller listed in the police affidavit was allegedly a friend of Caitlin Armstrong. And that caller told investigators that Caitlin had discovered that Colin and Mariah were still seeing each other in January of 2022. And she told the caller that she was planning on buying a gun and was angry enough to kill Mariah Wilson. Another anonymous source alleged that it was Colin's custom and practice of finding the most unstable, attractive girls and playing games with them until it all exploded in drama. They further alleged that his past relationships ended in property damage and restraining orders. However, we have not been able to corroborate any of this information and there is no public restraining orders against Colin. In fact, police were able to completely and empathetically clear Colin's name in Mariah's murder through phone data and video surveillance that showed he immediately left the area after dropping Mariah off at Cash's apartment. Colin was never a suspect, nor was he a person of interest. By the time police were able to get an arrest warrant for Caitlin Armstrong, she disappeared and deleted all of her social media accounts. Police discovered that the day after they spoke with Caitlin, she went to a car dealership and sold her Jeep for $12,200. Colin told investigators that the last time he saw Caitlin was on May 13, 2022, two days after Mariah was brutally murdered. Investigators discovered that she boarded a flight to Houston on May 14th. And there she boarded another plane for LaGuardia Airport in New York. And then she vanished from sight. Caitlin's father said he couldn't imagine his daughter ever harming someone and gave an exclusive interview to Good Morning America pleading for Caitlin to turn herself in and fight the charges. There are a lot of unanswered questions here. We love you, Katie, and we are going to figure this out. This morning, the father of missing murder suspect, Caitlin Armstrong, speaking exclusively with ABC News. I know her, and I know how she thinks, and I know what she believes and that I know that she just would not do something like this. I, I know her, I know her. He says his daughter is not capable of committing the crime she's charged with shooting her alleged romantic rival, rising cycling star, Mariah Wilson. That is what they believe. I know that she did not do this. There are a lot of unanswered questions. Caitlin remained on the run for 43 days when U.S. Marshals discovered that she had left the country on a valid passport in someone else's name. It's speculated that she used her sister's passport on a flight to Costa Rica. Caitlin was found at a hostel in Santa Teresa Beach, known as a surfer's haven. Her appearance had drastically changed. Her hair was shorter and no longer strawberry blonde. The current brunette also had a bandage on her nose and a receipt from a local plastic surgeon. A review of her driver's license photo and mugshot clearly showed distinctive facial changes. While on the run, Caitlin was using aliases including Beth Martin, Liz Martin, and Ari Martin. Caitlin was found with several passports, including one in her sister's name. Federal law enforcement agents from Homeland Security discovered that Caitlin flew to Costa Rica using a passport of someone that was closely associated with her. There is a lot more to the story which has yet to be revealed. Those details will either be revealed at the time of the trial or through a plea bargain agreement. Apparently, Caitlin also had time to date while she was on the run. She dated a man named Teal Akerson, a local surf instructor, and in an interview he gave to the Associated Press, he stated that Ari was a strange person. I met her right outside the tattoo shop, Good Life Tattoos, where her friends were getting tattooed, so she was waiting outside on the bench. She said that she had just been through a real traumatizing breakup and she hadn't healed from it yet and wasn't ready to get close at all. So after a few dates, we were just friends. He even mentioned that he would see the photos of this woman on the news and on social media regarding the manhunt, but with the name difference and the old photos that they were using that didn't show her plastic surgery or the same hair color, it didn't even cross his mind. 
But when he looks back at all the little details, it makes sense. Like how she was always wanting to be away from the touristy areas and stay in secluded places. I'm wondering if this guy will ever date again. Once Caitlin was extradited back to Texas, her attorney requested a speedy trial. In a statement to the press, he stated that, quote, Miss Armstrong wants her day in court. She wants a trial, and you heard the district attorney threaten sanctions over her desire for a speedy trial. As a matter of course, cases should not be indicted if prosecutors are not prepared to proceed. We will file motions challenging this investigation and challenging the conduct of the Austin Police Department, end quote. Mariah's family also had a brief statement for the press in which they denied that their daughter was in any type of serious relationship with Colin. They stated that, quote, While we will not elaborate about the ongoing investigation, we do feel it's important to clarify that at the time of her death, those closest to her clearly understood directly from Mariah that she was not in a romantic relationship with anyone, end quote. Colin, who has been completely cleared in Mariah's death, has suffered severe backlash from the cycling community. His sponsors have dropped him, and he is currently waiting for justice. He also revealed that prior to Mariah's murder, he had given Caitlin $450,000 to invest for him. He has requested that she return the money, but so far, she has refused. And in an interview he recently gave to the Sun newspaper, he said that Caitlin had different sides to her personality that he didn't think were shared with anyone else in her life. It was a side he never saw or could have imagined existed. He described her as, quote, one of the least volatile people I have ever met. I had no indication of anything like that, end quote. He continued to state that he and Mariah were only friends and had only briefly dated in the fall of 2021 when he and Caitlin briefly broke up. In his interview with The Sun, he stated, quote, I had ended the relationship with Caitlin and it was just an interesting timing because Mariah had come to Austin to visit a friend that exact week. It was completely unplanned, and yeah, we started spending some time together. It was clearly expressed to Caitlin at the time, and Caitlin dated other men directly after that. We were clearly going our separate ways, but we just didn't get enough inertia to physically separate. I'm just in shell-shocked grieving mode. I'm not really thinking of Caitlin anymore, as that is outside the realm of my control. Obviously, she is not the same human that I knew." End quote. Colin wants to put this entire tragedy behind him, spending his days working on cars. He ended his interview by stating that, quote, my heart goes out to everyone who has more deeply traumatized by this than I was, end quote. He also said that he understood why sponsors and races had decided to distance themselves from him. But the record will be straightened out in October of this year when Caitlin Armstrong goes on trial for the senseless murder of Anna Mariah Wilson a murder she committed out of spite, jealousy, and revenge. Mariah was an intelligent, talented, and gifted person that deserves to be remembered by friends and family for the life she lived and the love she personified. Thank you all so much for listening to this week's episode. We will be with you next week. Crime Salad is a Weird Salad production. Are you kidding me? That was perfect. 